Welcome to a lesson on change of two variables for double integrals. This video will introduce the Jacobian for a transformation of two variables. We just finished studying double integrals in rectangular and polar form, as well as triple integrals in rectangular, cylindrical, and spherical form. And we know that we're converting to a different coordinate system, there are extra factors in the integrand. For example, for double integrals in polar form, we had an extra factor of r in the integrand, as well as in cylindrical form for triple integrals. And we also had the extra factors of rho squared sine phi when converting from rectangular to spherical form using triple integrals. So we're gonna develop a formula that will tell us when we switch coordinate systems what the extra factors in the, in the integrand would be, often called the integrating factor. Let's say we redefine x and y into the uv coordinate system where x is equal to g of uv and y is equal to h of uv. If we have a double integral in rectangular form and we want to convert it to the new coordinate system defined by u and v, we want to be able to determine what differential a would be equal to. Remember that differential a represents the area of a small parallelogram in the new uv coordinate system. Now here we are calling it a parallelogram, but you could also think of it as a rectangle if you needed to. So now if we let vector r have components x comma y, in the new coordinate system, vector r would have the components g of uv and h of uv. So the area of a small parallelogram would be determined by the partial derivative of r with respects to u times delta u and the partial derivative of r with respects to v times delta v. Remember, if we have two vectors, we can determine the area of the parallelogram formed by them by determining the magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors. So in our case, we'd have the magnitude of the partial derivative of r with respects to u times delta u crossed with the partial derivative of r with respects to v times delta v. This would be equal to the magnitude of the partial of r with respects to u crossed with the partial derivative of r with respects to v times delta u times delta v. Now at this point, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this cross product here. This would give us a three by three determinant where the first row would be i, j, k. And now for the second row, because r is defined using u and v in the new coordinate system, this would give us the partial derivative of x with respects to u and the partial derivative of y with respects to u. The k component would be zero. And then for the third row, we have the partial derivative of x with respects to v, partial derivative of y with respects to v, and then zero. Because of this third column being zero, the result is only gonna be a k component where we'll have the two by two determinant formed by the partial of x with respects to u, partial of y with respects to u, partial of x with respects to v, and the partial of y with respects to v times k. Let me go back up here. Remember, our ultimate goal was to determine the magnitude of this cross product. So the magnitude of the cross product now would be equal to the partial of x with respects to u times the partial of y with respects to v minus the partial derivative of x with respects to v times the partial derivative of y with respects to u. So putting these pieces together, we can now say that differential A, the small change in area, is gonna be equal to the absolute value of the partial of x with respects to u times the partial of y with respects to v minus the partial of x with respects to v times the partial of y with respects to u 
times differential u times differential v. Let's go back and take a quick look. Again, we showed that all of this was equal to the difference of this product, and then here's our differential u and our differential v, which gives us the approximate area of a small parallelogram, which would give us differential a. This right here is called the Jacobian, and this calculation here is going to give us the extra factors in our integrand when we convert differential a to our new coordinate system in terms of u and v. And the difference of this product called the Jacobian is often written using this notation here. So let's go ahead and summarize. The Jacobian of transformation of two variables is given by this formula here, as we just derived. So when converting a double integral, where r and s are regions in the x, y, and u, v plane, related by the given equations here, we can determine the extra integrating factor using this formula here. Now let's go ahead and look at an example where we convert a rectangular double integral to polar form, and when we calculate the Jacobian, we should get the extra factor of r in our integrand. Let's go ahead and see if we do. So in this case, x of r theta would be equal to r cosine theta, and y of r theta would be equal to r sine theta. So we want to verify that the Jacobian would be equal to r in this case. Let's go ahead and determine our partial derivatives. Partial of x with respect to r is going to give us cosine theta, and the partial of x with respect to theta would give us negative r sine theta, and the partial of y with respect to r would give us sine theta, then the partial of y with respect to theta, that will give us r cosine theta. Now let's go ahead and calculate the Jacobian. So the first row will be cosine theta, negative r sine theta, and the second row will be sine theta, r cosine theta. So we're going to have r cosine squared theta minus negative r sine squared theta. We have a common factor of r, so we'll have r and then cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which of course is equal to one. So this verifies that we're converting to polar form, we have an extra factor of r in the integrand. We'll take a look at another example in the second video. Thank you for watching.